All right, what's up, Skid Marks? Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys today about how to recover from a hard effort. All right, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's a long race, a mountain bike ride, uh, a CrossFit competition, a weightlifting competition, just a hard effort in general. And why am I, why am I even talking about this? I'm talking about this because we live in the age of social media influencers who uh, go and run a hundred mile race or go and do something really, really hard and they like to get on Instagram or get on YouTube the very next day after that hard effort and post videos showing themselves uh, running again or lifting heavy again or, or going hard again directly after that hard effort, right? It's become like this, this badge of honor. It's like a badge of honor that I can go run 100 miles and that, that I can, after that I can be running again the next day. That is freaking stupid. That is stupid, right? And so I'm talking about this to give you guys a realistic perspective on how real people recover from hard efforts. Uh, for me, I ran a 100-mile race just this past weekend. It's Thursday, okay? I finished that race on Sunday. A 100-mile run is a hard effort. <clears throat> I did 12 years in the SEAL teams, and I have been ultra running since 2018, and I have never had a single injury that has taken me out of the game long term. I've never had to have a, uh, a surgery or anything like that. And I attribute that to the fact that I have allowed myself to recover properly after these hard efforts, and I haven't let my pride get in the way, and I haven't gotten impatient during that process, I've allowed my body to bounce back before I go into another training block. So that's why we're talking about this. It's extremely important. So we'll hit a, hit a couple points here and hopefully right, so this You guys helps. have probably noticed that we are in a gym today. I've been coming to the gym all week since I finished this race the past weekend. And that leads me to my first point about how to recover properly from a hard effort. Uh, it's really, really important to maintain some sort of routine after you get done with whatever that thing is. <clears throat> One of the worst things that you can do after you finish a long race or whatever it looks like for you is just sit at the freaking house and just jack up your daily routine completely. Uh, that will affect you in a negative way mentally. So it's extremely important that whatever your routine looked like before you did that race or that, or that difficult thing that you now need to recover from, whatever your routine looked like, you need to stay on that routine. You just need to modify the intensity of it. So prior to me running my race last weekend, it was part of my routine to work out every single day. So I'm still going to move my body, I'm going to get up, get out of the house, I'm going to come here to my local gym, and I'm going to move my body every single day. Um, it's part of my routine to go to sleep at a certain time, to wake up at a certain time. All the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, that doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the intensity. So keep your routine. Now, coming here to the gym to work out after my 100 mile race, it can be a difficult thing because when we come here, we are not worried, I'm not worried this week about even breaking a sweat. I'm not worried about getting my heart rate up. I'm not worried about building muscle in here this week. All I'm worried about is sticking to my routine, coming here, and simply moving my body. That's all I'm worried about. So the first day after the race, I came here. All I did was some stretching on a mat like this, just some simple downward dogs, uh, some simple hamstring stretches, quads, uh, really, really, really easy stuff. I did some foam rolling. Uh, I like to hit my, <clears throat> I don't know, 
my freaking butt cheeks like this because they're all jammed up, my hamstrings, my quads. The foam roller is one of your best friends. And then of course, when you, when you find those spots that are really bound up and you want to get pressure on them, these little lacrosse balls are super, super helpful, all right? So first day back, simply stretching and foam rolling. After that, so now we're talking about Wednesday, Thursday, today's Thursday. All I'm doing is I'm coming in here, I'm doing the prescribed workout, but I'm, I'm backing off the intensity to the point that I'm not even breaking a sweat, all right? So along with backing off the intensity, I'm also going to choose to do things here or modify things here <coughs> in the gym that are going to require the least amount of impact. So I'm backing off intensity and I'm also avoiding impact. That's really important, especially if your hard effort was a long race, a running race. The impact is the thing that jacks you up and tears all the muscle fibers and the, the, the little ligaments and stuff in your knees and hips. Those things need to be repaired. So it, in order to back off of impact, we have things that allow us to move our bodies with zero impact. And I personally love the dang rower. I love the assault bike, uh, the regular C2 bike. So this week, I'm not doing any running period because I want to avoid the impact. Anything that's prescribed running in here, I'm gonna sub it for a rower, an assault bike, a C2 bike, something like that. Maybe that ski erg back there. <clears throat> so back off intensity, completely avoid any impact. And that's what we're doing when we are choosing to stick with our routine and move our body. We're not going out and running the freaking day after or the week after a race. All right, guys, the last thing I wanna talk about in this conversation of how to recover from a hard effort or a 100 mile race or whatever it is you did is diet and nutrition because I know it's gonna come up in the comments of this video. <clears throat> um, we've already talked about sticking to our routine. We've talked about lowering the intensity and lessening the impact for the first week or even the first few weeks after the hard effort, diet and nutrition. What I wanna really stress about your diet and nutrition is you really shouldn't have to change that much in your recovery phase after your hard effort. If you're eating right, you should be eating right every single day. Uh, it doesn't matter if, it's, uh, if you don't have something on the calendar, it doesn't matter if you're in a training phase. It doesn't matter if you're recovering. You should be eating the right way every single day. And if you do that, you really don't have to change much about the way that you eat in terms of recovery after your hard effort. So I'll give you a little rundown on what I eat every single day. Uh, it's pretty, pretty simple. As far as supplementation goes, I use whey protein uh, exclusively first form. Formula One whey protein every single day. Uh, I use the first form creatine every single day. These are the two main supplements that I use on a daily basis. Why do we go with first form? Well, I've been using their products for years and their products are top of the line. They work well, they taste good. Uh, they actually produce results and do what they say they're supposed to do. At least that's been my experience. And on top of that, it's an amazing company uh, all around. The people, the place, the values. So first form supplements, these are the two that I use daily. And uh, I'll attach a link in the video if you guys wanna get some Formula One whey protein or some creatine, you guys can click that link in the description of this video. Eat a lot of fruit, mostly in the form of berries, blueberries, strawberries, uh, a lot of bananas, I guess, in the fruit category blackberries, raspberries, all that good stuff. So <clears throat> a lot of fruit. Twice a day, I'll eat a bowl of fruit usually. I actually like dairy products also. I know dairy has been demonized over the last, I don't know, couple of years for some odd reason. I love dairy products. Um, cottage cheese, uh, whole fat Greek yogurt, 
Uh, if you can get your hands on some raw milk, whole milk, that's also really good stuff. So a lot of good protein comes from this stuff. I eat a ton of eggs. We have chickens. My eggs come, come from our chickens and I probably eat anywhere from eight to 10 eggs a day. <clears throat> a lot of red meat. I eat a lot of red meat in the form of ribeyes or fillets or that type of stuff. I'm not big on chicken and fish. I love red meat. And then I also eat a lot of organic white rice. Uh, I usually put some cheese in there and some hot sauce, good stuff like that. Uh, sweet potatoes, that's a big one. That's a big one. So that's kind of my main forms of carbohydrates. But anyways, guys, again, in recovery phase from the hard effort, I just finished this 100 mile race last weekend. I don't have to change anything about the way I eat. I eat when I'm hungry and I eat good stuff and that keeps me going. It's a really important aspect of your health and of your performance that you need to build into your daily life and it shouldn't need to be shifted or changed before or after a hard effort. It should just be part of your everyday program. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you got anything out of this episode, drop a comment and uh, <clears throat> go get you some first form support the companies that support us here at 307 Project. They are first form, just became a partner uh, with us here at 307 Project not long ago. And I've been using their products for years, even before they were our partners, because they're the best. So I'm really thankful to have them on as a partner. And hopefully you guys will enjoy their stuff as much as I have over the years. All right. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Enough said.